Year 10 and 11, welcome to your revision on the supernatural in Macbeth in preparation for your GCSE exam. Very basically then, the supernatural is the belief that mysterious and or unnatural forces are behind things that happen. And at the time the play was written, people and even the king, James I, believed in the supernatural and the existence of witches. The witches are the first characters we meet in the play and act as a catalyst for the main events and especially the murder of King Duncan. We'll start again very simply, but please uh, stay watching if you need extra detail uh, in terms of something more challenging, as I'll do that in, in a couple of minutes. But very basically, the witches are symbolic of evil. Uh, I suppose they are today as well. We do associate evil happenings with witches and the supernatural and Macbeth refers to the witches as instruments of darkness and if you look at that metaphor it's a good one to analyse if you are talking about the witches being a catalyst and the witches foreshadowing the events the instrument of darkness sounds like they are a tool or can control uh, dark goings on which essentially is what happens isn't it the audience is intrigued to see if their prophecies are realised some critics even argue that Lady Macbeth becomes the fourth witch. So again, in terms of interpretation, you need to decide whether that is something you believe or want to write about. Um, and don't forget, Lady Macbeth does seemingly echo their words in her opening appearance. So when we see the witches talking to Macbeth and then we meet Lady Macbeth in Act 1, Scene 5, she sounds very similar to them. I'm going to go into Lady Macbeth in a lot more detail as well if you do hang around um, to watch some more. Um, as mentioned earlier, King James I was paranoid and even fearful of witches. So to the Jacobean audience, witches had to make a pact with the devil. And as a consequence of that, that meant that they rejected or were rejecting any belief in God. OK, so again, if you think about what that means, that they are, if they're making a pact with the devil, they are choosing evil over religion, over faith. Now, witches represent instinctive evil. And that is something outside of the limits of human comprehension. And perhaps that is the reason Lady Macbeth pleads in that uh, speech in Act 1, Scene 5. Come you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse. So if you look at that come you spirits, you've got that imperative, that demand that she needs to be like them. She's tapping into supernatural ideas in order to fulfil what she thinks is her arguably her destiny, which is to become the queen. Again, I'm going to analyse that in more detail if you stay with me. Uh, the witches connect then and combine the natural world with the supernatural. And they foreshadow the atmosphere and events of the whole play. And actually, and this is key, so please note this down, Shakespeare places more emphasis on them as prominent characters as they speak in rhyming couplets opposed to other characters who speak in blank verse. Don't forget, obviously, um, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth will speak in the iambic pentameter in places and eventually Lady Macbeth will end up uh, speaking in prose at the end. But, um, as I say... They, they appear to be more prominent because they are they stand apart from the other characters because of the use of rhyming couplets. So that might be something you want to include in an answer on the supernatural. And also Shakespeare's stage directions link the witches to this eerie world, this evil world, this world where um, we know something evil uh, is about to happen. You know, we get the thunder and lightning before they enter in Act 1, Scene 1. Again, it's an ominous, foreboding atmosphere that something terrible will be associated with the witches. We also get the witches here, the calls of their spirit friends or familiars, which look like animals. One is a cat and one is a toad. So again, we've got these things that we associate with, like witches in a cauldron and the ingredients they would put into a cauldron. And then one of them, I come Grey Malkin, Grey Malkin being a cat. The witches have the power and ability to transform and use metamorphosis so again your audience will be unnerved and unsettled by the witches and as i said earlier because they are symb symbolic of evil we are almost waiting for them to cause the evil events 
which, as we know, initially is the death of the king, the murder of the king. The witches, as well, if you're going further in your analysis, often speak in juxtaposition. So you've got they speak in the rhyming couplet and juxtaposition. The key, the key, the big one there is fair is foul and foul is fair. Now, if if there's a juxtaposition or a confusion in the natural order, that again subtly links us to Macbeth because he is um, defying the divine right, isn't he, by going murdering the king. And with this language of juxtaposition, they seem to corrupt any moral values that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth may have had. The language of the witches, as I say, juxtaposition, there's another example. Lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy yet much happier. And the contradictions used in their language uh, serve to confuse the protagonist's moral compass and they lose the ability to see right from wrong, i.e. Macbeth. Uh, more so because don't forget when we first hear Ma of Macbeth, he's brave and he's valiant and he's this soldier that seemingly saved the army in battle. And obviously as the play progresses, we witness his downfall. So as I say, his moral compass and any moral value he might have had seems to be contaminated by the witch's prophecies. I'm going to go into a lot more detail here about Lady Macbeth and the witches. But if you need my full video on Lady Macbeth, please check out the YouTube channel. Just type in Stacey Ray and it'll be there. So Lady Macbeth then. So after she hears of the witch's prophecy, she addresses the powers of darkness directly, doesn't she? She she speaks to the powers that be in terms of something evil. I gave you that speech earlier. Uh, come you spirits, tend on mortal thoughts. And she wants to either become one of the witches or embody the supernatural characteristics that they hold. Now the Jacobean audience believed that a witch's body was hard and ruined by age. Supposedly their bodies were hunted and wanted by demons and, and the demons would be drawn to the lower body. So we're talking about the genitals here. Uh, and again, there seems to be a subtle link to Lady Macbeth. I'm going to go into detail now, so stay with me. Lady Macbeth delivers lines which are connected to the loss of milk and the loss of femininity. And we get that massive line, unsex me here, where she's repressing her gender. And again, as I mentioned, come you spirits. In this speech, you know, Act 1, Scene 5, the, the huge soliloquy she has. She appears to reject the sexed body and any idea of gender. And this reminds us of the witches who also appear unsexed. Or rather, their gender is doubted by Banquo because they have beards. Don't forget when Banquo meets them, he calls them imperfect speakers and, he, and he's... Uh, they're referred to as imperfect, imperfect speakers who have beards and he's not so sure um, what their gender is. And we can see the link there to Lady Macbeth. As we know, as the female body ages, menopause begins. Lady Macbeth is suppressing her femininity in this play. This is why she asks that her blood be made thick. As you quote, make thick my blood. Again, it's imperative. People believe that a witch's blood was thought to be so thick with old age that it was impossible to take blood from it from a witch. You couldn't get their blood. According to the early works of Aristotle as well, breast milk was believed to be impure blood from the womb that was made white and pure by maternal love and it travelled upward through the body until it reached the breasts. Okay, now, Lady Macbeth in our play wants to replace her milk for gall implying that she has lost her maternal ability. Gall is also poison that supposedly witches dealt in and witches used. So again, if you're looking at Lady Macbeth's lines very closely, she doesn't want to have the blood or the milk of a maternal female. And this, as, as I say, is closely linking her to this idea of something supernatural, something evil, uh, the witches. During this era, babies who were not breastfed were far more likely to die. Again, this directly links Lady Mac Macbeth's dashing of the brain's imagery. You know, that awful image she gives us about the killing of the baby with her nipples. She imagines herself murdering her child by refusing to feed it with the breast milk. Now, as I've just said before there, it was believed that babies who were not breastfed were more likely to die. So this possibly aligns Lady Macbeth with the witches again. 
because witches were beings who stole and substituted their milk for blood. So you've got this idea that witches would steal milk from animals and replace that milk with blood. Again, you can't deny the links here between Lady Macbeth and the witches. Please pause the video there to make any notes that you may feel relevant. I'm just going to move on now to just two other examples of the supernatural, which is the dagger and Banquo's ghost, and then that's it. So another key example then of the supernatural is obviously the dagger that points towards Duncan's room. You know, that is this a dagger I see before me speech. It uh, is a delusion of the frenzied and fanatical brain and the dagger almost encourages Macbeth towards the room and it's covered in blood, don't forget. And we get a dagger of the mind, a false creation. And as an audience, we realise that all of the evil events are promoted, encouraged and foreshadowed by the supernatural. Uh, this idea, you know, that Macbeth arguably follows the knife into Duncan's room and stabs him. So again, he is... To some extent, you could argue that Macbeth is controlled by the supernatural here. And finally, Banquo's ghost is further evidence of Macbeth's state of mind and the journey to his downfall is the vision he sees of Banquo's ghost. Remember, as an audience member, as a reader, we realise how far he has fallen that he would have Banquo murdered. This supernatural moment acts as a symbol of the wrongdoings of Macbeth. So he, re so he faces what he's done and just how far he has fallen from the brave soldier in Act 1. Don't forget he is our tragic hero. By very definition, a tragic hero suffers a downfall. Macbeth is unnerved by the sight, isn't he? And we get the quote, blood hath been shed. Okay. Uh, in terms of the supernatural and the witches, I hope this has been helpful. Please go back if you need any other details about what I've said on the witches. If you need my Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Banquo or Ambition video, uh, please check the YouTube channel. Just type in Stacey Ray. Uh, massive good luck in your English literature exam.